hi uh, hello everyone welcome back so today is our lab 3 so as you can see from here your lab manual you can see what is the name of lab study on hydraulic jump right okay so I assume there is no question for lab 1 and 2 okay so although this uh, two labs uh, videos in uploaded already uploaded in the YouTube so you can easily check when whenever you want so today is our lab 3 this is specific specifically study on hydraulic jump so what is the main purpose from here you can see the main purpose of this experiment is to study hydraulic jump and how can we use the momentum equation to, to describe the phenomenon so our goal is to see experimentally and how can we measure the energy loss and sequent depth experimentally and then compare with the momentum equation so that is our purpose so let's start lab 3 okay so let's see when uh, there is a hydraulic jump so do you know anything about hydraulic jump probably from the class you have already know the hydraulic jump so when uh, the state of flow changes say for example you have supercritical flow to the subcritical flow okay so do you know anything about supercritical and subcritical of course no so uh, if say for example this is your specific energy curve what is specific energy curve again so this is basically uh, depth versus the specific energy right okay so this is your specific energy curve okay so in this curve for any specific energy you have two different depth one is the large one is small right and this depth is basically the critical depth so which is yc that was our experiment one okay so greater than the critical depth we call it subcritical depth and lower than the critical depth we call it supercritical depth okay so supercritical means your depth is small but the velocity is high so velocity is high means you have more unpredictability in your path right so and on the other hand in the subcritical region so you have uh, low velocity that means uh, to move through the subcritical path you have uh, less turbulence right less uh, barrier kind of okay so for example if you have two different path for example you want to go from the hydraulics lab to your home so two different path one path has very high velocity traffic and the other path is very low velocity traffic okay so for example every other things are constant so which one do you prefer of course the low velocity path right okay so for example just like similarly uh, every flow want to achieve their subcritical state because they have very low velocity but high depth okay so when there is a supercritical depth that the uh, condition is not stable uh, subcritical uh, depth is more stable so when there is a supercritical depth there will be a jump then jump it uh, jump form and then it achieve the subcritical stage okay so now let's see how does the supercritical depth looks like and how does the subcritical depth looks like okay okay so you can see from this slide that there is a hyd hydraulic structure right so you know this structure what is the name of this structure from the last slide so this is called the sluice gate so upstream of any hydraulic structure there is a subcritical depth right so you can see this is a subcritical and downstream of any hydraulic structure say for example here you can see supercritical so supercritical when there is a supercritical flow then it want to achieve the subcritical state okay so 
there is a jump so maybe this figure is not very clear but i can see you this is the i can show you the supercritical depth and the subcritical depth so this is called the jump there is a, some rotational current current here so you can see more clearly from this image okay this slide so this is our sluice gate and this is yg the depth of the sluice gate and subcritical depth is called y naught okay so and downstream of the sluice gate there is a depth called y1 this is called the supercritical depth and let's say this is section one and here is our jump okay so I, i'm going to show you how this jump looks like in a laboratory film but in the image so i think you already have this image in your lab manual so after the jump we have subcritical depth so y2 is subcritical depth and the y1 is supercritical depth so how uh, we know which one is supercritical or which one is subcritical of course based on critical depth or if you can calculate fruit number when here your fruit number what is the fruit number again so fruit number is basically the inertia ratio of inertia force and the gravi uh, gravitational force so it basically tells us uh, your velocity is how much strong to to overcome the gravity force okay so when this is greater than one you can see so that is called a supercritical flow when it is less than one this is called the subcritical flow so when uh, flow one to will go from supercritical to subcritical so there is a jump so this is basically the length of the jump and if you subtract y2 minus y1 this will give you the height of the jump right now i have a question for you so we have section one and section two right so if i want to measure specific energy as these two sections say what is specific energy depth plus velocity head right you can see from here so e1 is the specific energy at section one and e2 is specific energy at section 2 okay so what do you think which one is higher e1 or e2 or just the equal if you know the answer then i can give you the bonus 10 right <laughs> okay okay do you want me to tell the answer okay let's go here so here if you measure energy at two at these two section y1 and y2 or before the jump and after the jump then there is a huge difference e1 is much more greater than the e2 why because we know in hydraulic jump energy dissipation happen right you can see there is a energy dissipation here so that's why we cannot use energy equation here so what is energy equation Bernoulli says at every section energy is equal so for example this section and the, this section e1 should be equal to e2 but it is not so that's why we call it the rapidly varied flow in the rapidly varied flow we cannot use the Bernoulli's equation or energy equation so we have to use the momentum equation so you can see m1 and m2 it is perfectly equal so what is m m is called the specific momentum okay so just similar like a specific energy curve so specific momentum curve is exactly same okay so based on this equation what is this equation what is momentum equation m1 is equal to m2 so this is basically you know the newton second law of motion the force is equal to mass times acceleration okay so what is our purpose our purpose is to calculate uh, the properties of hydraulic jump uh, based on experimentally and the theoretically so uh, you can see here at the supercritical depth so there is a fruit number right f1 so for example your fruit number is should be greater than one right 
because it is super critical so for example if in your jump there is f1 value is 9 and the other one is f1 equal to 5 which one is very strong jump of course the 9 is strong jump right so based on this fruit number f1 the jump can be classified as like this so usbr uh, classify there are five types of jump based on the fruit number when this fruit number is 1 to 1 1.7 then this is called the undeveloped jump when i was student like you in undergrad i memorized this kind of jump like undeveloped weak oscillating steady strong okay so this is the scale uh, of fruit number based on this scale we can simply classify the jump which one is the weak jump which one is the strong jump and so on okay okay guys now i'm gonna show you what we have to uh, do we have to collect some data okay so you can see from your lab manual there is a table one so y1 uh, y1 you can see y1 there are a lot of variable right so y1 y2 is h j so l t so you know what is t time so why do we need time we need to measure discharge right volume by time that's why we need time so y1 is the depth before the hydraulic jump and y2 is the depth after the hydraulic jump that is supercritical depth and the subcritical depth so what is h j h j is the height of the jump this is simply y2 minus y1 okay and what is the L? L is the length of the jump. So now, uh, uh, now my duty is uh, is to divide you into five groups. But uh, you know, due to COVID nineteen, we cannot go to the lab, right? So I'm gonna show you how can we collect data, and then I'm gonna provide you this data. Okay? So let's see how can we collect the data. So before that I can show you so this is a kind of hydraulic jump so you can see uh, so this is basically you know turbulence we call it turbulence or rotational current okay so before this jump this is your supercritical and after the jump you have subcritical so this is basically the height and this is basically the length so every measurement are in millimeter now let's see how can we measure this uh, 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 parameter so say y1 y2 height length and the time and then oh, we'll come back to see how can we calculate all of these things okay so let's uh, come with me to see how can we measure all of these things okay turn on good okay okay guys so so far we have done two laps right first one is the critical depth and the second one is the measuring velocity okay now we are going to sh i'm going to show you the most important experiment that is called the hydraulic jump okay do you know what is hydraulic jump is when flow moves from supercritical to subcritical then there is a jump why because flow want to dissipate his energy so in the hydraulic jump we cannot use the energy equation we have to use momentum equation so based on that momentum equation we have some formula to measure the height of the jump loss energy loss in the jump so right now i am going to show you the hydraulic jump there are five types of jump according to the usbr so uh, i can divide you, you into five groups then you can share your data on your friend with your friend and i'm going to show you how can we measure head loss and so uh, so many other stuff of hydraulic jump uh, experimentally and then we can compare with the momentum uh, formula which is derived based on the momentum equa equation okay so i hope you can learn momentum equation in the class with dr dominic okay <laughs> and then you can compare okay let's let me show you how can we create jump in the flume all right so we have two different gate right so this one is called weir and this one is the 
sluice gate. So how can we create jump? Let me show you. Turn on. Okay. So now the depth is 10 millimeter and I can create jump based on this knob. If your discharge is high, then jump will shift in this direction. And if I raise the weir, then jump will shift in this direction. So is there any jump right now? No. Why? Because at the upstream of the sluice gate, we have subcritical. Then now here, we have supercritical. Supercritical means high velocity. And the subcritical means low velocity. So how can we create jump? Just I'm going to raise this weir. Is there any jump right now? Very small, right? Very small. Okay, let me increase the discharge a little bit higher. So we have to trial and error. Okay, let me lower the gate a little bit. Now you can see the jump, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is called the hydraulic jump. So you can see the turbulence here. This basically dissipate the energy. If you measure energy here and the total energy here, then you can see which one is higher. This one, of course, is higher. Then there will be some energy loss. That, that is called the energy dissipation. So due to the energy dissipation, we cannot use the energy equation here. We have to use the momentum equation. Okay, so if you look at your lab manual, so Y1, that is the depth before the jump, that is called the supercritical depth, and Y2 here, this is after the jump, and this is called the length of the jump, and this is called the height of the jump. So experimentally, we can see the height of the jump is basically gone so here as you know so this is the supercritical depth y1 and this is the subcritical depth y2 if you subtract from subcritical to supercritical you will get the height of the jump and if you measure the length so this is called the length of the jump length is start from here and somewhere in between here where is the flow is streamline is almost parallel okay so i'm going to provide you the all of the data for the discharge, how can we measure discharge again? Just like the other experiment, volume by time using this scale. So you have height, you have length of the jump, you have Y1 and Y2, and you have the discharge. Then you can calculate and calculate, uh, calculate the energy loss, calculate the, how much, uh, what is the sequent depth, based on formula and uh, you can compare with the jump. Okay, so that's all for lab three. Okay. All right guys, uh, so uh, you can see from this slide, so this is your data table. So our raw data table. So this is table one, recorded experimental data. So you can see there are five observation, right? So our five group. I don't know who is uh, in uh, whose group, uh, but uh, all of you can share this data. And this is your Y1. So as you can see, so for different Y1, you have different Y2, right? So which one is greater, Y2 or Y1? Y2 is greater, right? Because this is subcritical. And if you subtract like Y2 minus Y1, then you will get the uh, height of the jump or in millimeter. And uh, based on the a scale, we can measure the length of the jump. This is your length of the jump and this is your time. So this is your, all of your raw data table. So you can take this data for your calculation and then you have to complete your report. So can you calculate by yourself or I have to show something? Okay. So let me show you some calculation for you. So this is your table one and this is the table two. So from the table two, so first of all, this is your table one, right? So table two, 
so you can see uh, first thing first we have to calculate the discharge just like the other experiment as you did in lab 1 and lab 2 okay so how can we calculate discharge we have time right the volume by time so the volume is uh, how much the volume is let's say uh, 15 liter right the volume is 15 liter and what is y1 so y1 you already have it right then you can compute the velocity one so one means at the supercritical section and the two means the subcritical section okay so you can simply calculate the velocity so what is b b is equal to 77 because we are using the same uh flu okay and then e1 what is the name of e specific energy so for open channel we cannot use the total energy concept we always use the specific energy and you already have y2 you can calculate similarly v2 and e2 and then take the difference you will get the how much energy loss in the hydraulic jump or how much energy dissipated in the jump okay so then uh, this is a kind of you know experimental energy loss so when del e del e is the experimental energy loss okay now i'm going to show you how can we calculate energy loss and this y2 theoretically okay so theoretically uh, we can simply use m1 equal to m2 but uh, m1 uh, equal to m2 is uh, momentum equation right so based on momentum equation we can derive some lot of formula for the hydraulic jump uh, if you can see your lab manual we can derive the length formula height formula and so on so now look at your table 3 there is a nice chart okay so only you know y1 here okay and then calculate velocity then calculate how much is the fruit number okay so based on this fruit number you can classify the jump is there uh, weak jump or strong jump or oscillating jump you can classify that right okay so then you have to calculate this y2 i know you have already y2 but that is the experimental y2 so this y2 is the theoretical y2 so based on this equation so how can you uh, how how can you derive this equation based on momentum equation m1 is equal to m2 so if you plug your fruit number here you will get your y2 right and for the length so this is not experimental length that we already measure this is the theoretical length so to measure theoretical length you can use this formula which is function of fruit number okay then uh, you have to measure some relative y1 so with respect to e1 so e1 you already measured it here so based on this equation so you can see based on this equation you can measure y1 by e1 and y2 by e1 this y1 is from here and this y2 is the theoretical y2 not the experimental y2 okay and is j divided by e1 so this is called the relative height so we have the height right so this is called the relative height is j with respect to e1 so this is based on this formula of course this is theoretical formula you can derive it easily based on m1 is equal to m2 so based on momentum equation then uh, there is another term e2 by e1 we call it efficiency of hydraulic jump so for example if your e2 is much much lower than the e1 then your efficiency is very low right why very low because your input is 100 percent say for example your output is 10 percent energy so then it is very uh, low efficiency right so you can calculate efficiency simply e2 by e1 or using the theoretical formula so for this table you can use this formula theoretical formula so this formula you can easily derive based on momentum equation and at the end so you can calculate the uh, energy loss based on this formula y2 minus y1 whole cube divided by 4 y1 y2 so which is called the theoretical energy loss and you have the experimental energy loss already in table 2 
then you can compare right okay so that is uh, our purpose so now the question is how can we compare we have to draw a nice curve so let me show you how looks how to looks uh, so this curve is very nice curve so this is called the characteristics curve of hydraulic jump so you can see from here your how many lines are there four lines four color right okay so here we have already expressed all of this quantity based on the fruit number so look at this curve x axis is the fruit number so you have five fruit number okay so then you can plot it here so and you have efficiency e2 by e1 so which is gradually decreases as fruit number increases that is makes sense you know because if you have higher fruit number higher strength of the jump your efficiency will be lower right okay so from the characteristics curve it is already clear that y2 versus e1 and e2 versus e1 which is efficiency and uh, y1 versus e1 so all of these four quantity which is uh, y1 versus e1 y2 versus e1 sj versus e1 e2 versus e1 you can plot it easily okay so this is the ideal curve of hydraulic jump provided by us vr okay but i'm expecting when you plot it so you will see only this portion okay so as a function of fruit number i am expecting from you that you will observe this curve right not the uh, not the this uh, this portion at least this portion so i am not expecting ex curve exactly like this but some kind of uh, like this so this is uh, you know the curve uh, which i am expecting and of course you have to plot another curve which is basically the uh, length and the, and the height so, so this is a kind of an, another graph to see if uh, your height of the jump increases then length is increases or decreases and that's all uh, for the lab 3 hydraulic jump so uh, so our basic purpose is to see how much the uh, our measurement def defy the law from the uh, you know the momentum equation okay and if uh, don't forget to answer the lab question so uh, I'm I can show you at a glance what are the lab questions is okay so you can see from here uh, this is your lab manual uh, this is the characteristics curve as I just uh, show you and there are five lab questions so question number four plot the curve of L versus y2 minus y1 okay so what is y2 minus y1 this is the experimental height I mean sj which is already you took it uh, already I provided you the data right and L is the experimental length so for this question number four you have to plot the experimental length and the experimental height to see uh, if the length is increases height is increases or decreases and uh, the question number five is basically the plot you know characteristics curve and I hope um, you know the question number one which is type of the jump uh, according to USBR classification so I already show you showed you okay and uh, and there are two other questions so if you uh, read your lab manual correctly carefully then I think you should be able to answer it okay and for when you draw the curve uh, in order to draw the curve use the scatter with only markers okay uh, chart in Excel so in Excel you can just uh, easily plot the regression line or ten trend line so which fit better then you can plot with this one 
So that's all for lab three and the report format already at the end of the lab manual. So you have to submit just like the last experiment, okay? Uh, introduction, objective, procedure, experimental data already I provided you and result in tabulated format and uh, answer of the lab question discussion and conclusion and for the sample calculation you have to I'm expecting you you show at least one observation say for example you have five observation so there are five jumps right so for at least one jump how you calculated table 2 how you calculated table 3 you can explain uh, with equation and so that's uh, all for your sample calculation and that's all for your lab 3 if you have any questions so feel free to email me through web course inbox and stay healthy stay safe hopefully uh, we'll meet in zoom next week okay that's all good luck